to section 2.8, moment and couple. We'll begin by looking at moment. Now, uh, I encourage you to go back to section 2.4, uh, read through that section and also look at all the videos. Um, yeah, this is just a continuation of that, but now in three dimensions. So let's look at this figure here, this um, this body over here, and there's a force F being applied to the body, and we consider any point that's not on the line of action O. And if we want to determine what is the moment of this force about O, but remember we're in three dimensions, okay? So just keep that in mind, not in two, not in two D. So we're in three dimensions, and if you remember from section 2.4, what we were saying is that um, in two dimensions, it's generally quite easy to get this moment arm, this perpendicular distance from the line of action to the point of rotation or this axis of rotation. But in three dimensions, it's often very difficult, sometimes not possible. So what you want to do, right, we know that moment is f d but this d is that perpendicular distance right okay so in three dimensions what we want to do is we want to use this equation r cross f where r as a reminder is a position vector from this point of rotation there so it runs from o to any point on the line of action of the force okay did you did you hear it said any point on the line of action of f any point and you can go back to section 2.4 to see why that is the case but it is to do with the fact that uh, this is equal to magnitude of r times the magnitude of f times the sine of alpha times the sine of alpha. And then of course there's a there's a vector component here because this is a this is a vector product. So I'm leaving out the vector component here. But I want you just to see this matter of the sine alpha. R sine alpha. R sine alpha will always give you that perpendicular distance. Doesn't matter if you use that position vector, that position vector, that position vector r sine alpha will always give you the perpendicular distance. Okay. That's why uh, using vector product, using vectors and the cross product is sometimes a lot easier. Okay. Now, what about the direction? So we, we need to use the cross product, but what about the direction? The direction of of a moment. First of all, moment is a vector, so it has a direction. Okay, and this direction we determine using the right hand rule. So, put your fingers in the direction of the position vector or the the moment arm from the point of rotation from O to this line of action, and then curl it in the direction of the force. R cross F. R cross F. So put your fingers in that direction, curl it in the direction of F, and you'll see you'll see it it's got this kind of shape, right? Or tendency or rotational tendency. So this force is moving like that, and your thumb then is pointing in the positive direction of this moment vector. Okay? So please make sure that you get that right. Remember that R cross F is not the same as F cross R. They have the same magnitude, but the opposite direction. Okay. So this is just the, the conceptual idea again. Uh, in the next one, we will look at actually how do we compute the cross product.